Welcome, fellow Vikings, to the untamed wilderness of Valheim. Today we embark on a journey through the dense and foreboding depths of the Black Forest. In this comprehensive guide, I'll equip you with the knowledge and strategies you need to survive and thrive amidst the challenges of this treacherous biome. From defeating formidable foes like trolls with ease to gathering precious resources like copper and tin to craft powerful new weapons and armor, I've got you covered. Let's go. Trolls are one of the first mobs you encounter once you reach the Black Forest. These giant beasts can be intimidating at first, but with a few tips, they can be easily dispatched or used to do your bidding. Trolls are weak to pierce and fire damage, so the best way to take them out is with a bow and fire arrows. Be sure to make use of sneak attacks by crouching, and aim for the head because headshots actually work on trolls and they do a lot more damage. If you prefer to fight the troll with melee, the Abyssal Razor can make a good weapon to open with a backstab. I'll tell you how to get this weapon later. Then you finish the troll with the Bronze Atgear. This weapon is unique because its secondary attack stuns the troll, then you can poke it to death while it's staggered for extra damage. Once you level up your sneak and knife skill to somewhere between about 10 and 20, you'll be able to two-shot trolls with the Abyssal Razor. You probably already know this, but troll attacks do chop and pickaxe damage, meaning their attacks can chop down trees or mine ore for you. The best tactic is to lead the troll over to the resource you wanted to mine, then run right as he winds up his attack, then rinse and repeat. One thing to remember is the troll with the log normally alternates between his two attacks, the down swing, then the sideways swing, so you can use that knowledge to your advantage when collecting resources. In the Black Forest, you will come across troll caves. These can be useful for a few reasons. For one, oddly enough, trolls can't fit through the entry of their cave, so you're safe from their attacks here. I do think the troll with the log can still hit you here, so be careful. You can also run inside the cave and reset your aggro. This is a small instance cave that can sometimes have a troll and some treasure inside. If there is a troll inside, you can use the cave to easily level your sneak skill by sneak walking into a wall around the corner from the troll. When killed, trolls drop 5 troll hide, which can be used to make a really OP armor called the troll armor. And what makes this OP is if you upgrade it once, it has the same armor rating as bronze armor. This set also has the cool benefit of being the first armor you can craft in Valheim with a set bonus. Meaning if you wear the whole set of troll armor, you'll get a buff called sneaky that increases your sneak skill by 15. So I definitely suggest one of the first things you do when you get to the Black Forest is kill 5 trolls to get a full set of troll armor. Grey Dwarf Nest are Grey Dwarf spawners that you'll come across in the Black Forest. The nest activates when there is a player within 60 meters, and will spawn three Grey Dwarfs. You can destroy these spawners by simply hitting it with your weapon, which will stop the enemies from spawning. These can also be turned into an automatic farm to provide infinite resources like wood, stone, and resin. To turn a Grey Dwarf Nest into an automatic farm, you need to dig out a rather large area underneath the spawner. Cover all the ground with floors except for a 4x4 area right under the spawner. Then place 5 braziers there and slightly cover them with the hose level ground ability. Then you have a great automatic farm you can AFK at for resources. Credit for this design goes to Total Eclipse's video. I'll have a link for their video in the description for an in-depth tutorial on how to make this farm. Side note, these nests are great sources of ancient seeds, which you will need to summon the Black Forest boss known as the Elder. Ancient seeds can also be dropped by Grey Dwarf Brutes. While exploring, you'll come across two different types of burial chambers. These are one of the first instance dungeons you'll encounter on your Valheim journey. These are effectively maze-like tombs inhabited by skeletons, their spawners known as evil bone piles, and ghosts. Burial chambers house important items called Certling Cores, which is used to construct charcoal kilns and smelters, which is needed to smelt the ores we will be obtaining later in our journey. Did you know if you use a Certling Core on a campfire, it will shoot into the air and burst creating a firework? Certling Cores and other treasures like coins, amber, and rubies can be found in rooms throughout the burial chambers. Skeletons are weak to blood damage, so the mace is the most effective weapon against them. Even if you only have a wooden club, that's a decent choice, but ideally you'll have a bronze mace or stag breaker. Stag breaker is especially useful because it has an AoE attack that does damage through doors, so you can just cheese the skeletons and their spawners by destroying them through the wall with stag breaker. One kind of anti-tip I suppose is in a lot of other tip videos, people suggest standing on this platform at the entrance for safety. But I guess at some point the Valheim developers added an accessibility ramp for the skeletons, so just be aware of that. 
The skeletons don't respawn in the burial chambers after killing them, but these yellow mushrooms do respawn after about 4 hours. These are used as food or to make stamina potions, also called meads. In the Black Forest, you can find two different types of ores that can be mined, copper and tin. Copper is found throughout the Black Forest and is identified by subtle bronze-colored streaks that reflect in the sunlight. This is the only visual feature that distinguishes them from typical stone boulders. To mine the copper, you'll need to use the antler pickaxe, crafted from the hard antler that Ikear the first boss dropped when he defeated him. These copper veins are a lot bigger than they seem on the surface, so I suggest you start by mining along the perimeter of the entire copper deposit, so it makes it harder to lose the vein while mining. You should also craft a small camp nearby with a crafting table with a roof so you can repair your pickaxe on site and mine as much copper as you need. Oh, and I normally mark copper veins with this little pickaxe icon on my map and the burial chambers with this little phallic obelisk thingy so I can go back to them when I have time. As for the tin, these are small shiny rock-like deposits on the ground near water, so in other words, tin can be found at any shoreline in the Black Forest. Tin can be mined with the antler pickaxe, and it's worth noting tin does not respawn. Now that you have copper and tin ore, take it back to your base and refine the ore by throwing it in the smelter with charcoal. If you need charcoal, just throw a bunch of wood in your kiln. Once you have smelted some copper bars, use six of them to make a forge. This crafting bench unlocks a lot of new armor and weapons, and new structures you can build in its proximity. But to make a lot of this new gear and structures, you'll need bronze bars and bronze nails. To craft bronze, you'll need to combine two copper bars and one tin bar at a forge. This is where the real grind starts in Valheim, collecting enough copper and tin to make all this new stuff. This is why I suggest you forgo bronze armor and just stick with the upgraded troll armor to conserve on your bronze usage. While there's definitely more exciting things to craft with your first refined ore you obtain, I suggest you use it to level up your food game by using your tin to craft a cauldron and your bronze to craft a cultivator. Throughout the Black Forest, you can rarely find carrot seed plants. You can loot these for carrot seeds and plant them with your cultivator. Carrots will grow over the course of two to three-ish days and then can be collected. Carrots can be eaten raw, fed to your boars to breed them, or used in recipes at the cauldron like deer stew and carrot soup. Boar jerky is also a good early game hybrid food, which means it gives an even amount of 23 health and stamina. Oh, I almost forgot you'll also need blueberries for a lot of these recipes. Blueberries can be found on bushes throughout the Black Forest. You can also use bronze to construct a fermenter which you can use to craft any mead you found the recipe materials for. Meads are just what Valheim calls potions. I think there's a little booze mixed in too though. Most mead recipes require thistle, which can be found throughout the Black Forest. It's this small green thorny plant with a blue glow, which makes it quite easy to find at night. Definitely make some poison resistance mead before heading to the swamp once you're ready. Bonus tip? If you want, you can sneak over to the swamp early, kill a few leeches with your stag breaker on the shore, and get their blood bags, then craft a frost resistance meat. When consumed, you can venture to the mountain biome without getting the freezing effect. And you might be like, Samo, why would I want to go to the mountains early? Well, you can go and tame a couple of wolves and breed an army of wolves to fight by your side and defend your base. And oh, have you seen my two star wolf guide? It'll teach you how to tame and breed the strongest, the OPest two-star wolf, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. Link will be in the description. There's a lot of new building possibilities that open up with Black Forest progression. For example, core wood makes a way better support beam than normal wood beam, allowing you to build higher and with less beams needed to hold up a building. And you can craft bronze nails, which you can use to make a few cool things, like item stands to display your items around your base. You can also make a new boat that's actually usable called the Carve, which we'll get more into later. And you can also craft a cart, which you can use to store a ton of items then transport them over a distance. I suggest you path in the ground between your destinations though to make the cart trips a little easier. You can construct bronze sconces that are vastly superior to standing wood torches because they last three times longer. A fully fueled standing wood torch will last 11 hours, but a fully fueled bronze sconce will last over 33 hours. The Carve is the first boat that's actually advisable to use for an ocean adventure. The ocean biome isn't quite done yet game development wise, but there's still a few useful items to collect on the high seas. For example, you'll come across leviathans. These are massive rock type beings. These island-like creatures have one resource to collect on them, chitin, 
from barnacles which will need a pickaxe to mine. I suggest bringing at least a bronze pickaxe because the antler pickaxe is kind of weak and each time you mine in the abyssal barnacle, the leviathan has a 25% chance of submerging. When submerging is about to start, the leviathan will start to shake and kick up a bunch of water for a moment. The first screech is just a warning, however. You'll have 20 more seconds before the second screech, which means you have 10 seconds before the leviathan fully submerges. I suggest heading to your boat a few seconds after the second screech. You'll need 20 chitin to craft the abyssal razor, which is a really good knife weapon I talked about earlier. And you'll need 30 chitin to craft the abyssal harpoon, which is a utility spear that's primary attack throws the spear and latches onto a creature, like the sea serpent, so you can drag it to shore and kill it there so its loot won't sink deep into the ocean. I'll get more into the ocean biome in a future guide, but for now I suggest just getting enough chitin for the abyssal razor because it's one of the most OP weapons you can unlock during this phase of the game. With Black Forest progression you also unlocked another way to get around your world. By combining 10 grey dwarf eyes, 20 fine wood, and 2 certling cores you can construct a portal. You just need two portals with matching names and they will connect, and you simply walk through to be able to travel between them. I highly suggest using a lot of portals in your world to save time getting around, so you have more time for the fun things like to explore your world. I got a few portal tips. I suggest keeping a blank portal at your base at all times in case you're really far away and need to get back to your base. You can find all the materials needed to craft a portal in the meadows and black forest biomes and get back to your base in a pinch. You really only need one other portal at your base when you're tight on crafting materials, so keep a list of all portals you have across your world and just change the name of that portal to wherever you need to go and keep the other portal blank. And make sure to bring materials to make a portal when exploring and first landing on a new island or going to a boss. The worst part about Valheim is walking back to your body after a brutal embarrassing death and this can be mitigated greatly by just making a lot of portals. By combining the use of boats and portals you can really start to explore your Valheim world. Occasionally you will come across large abandoned stone structures in the Black Forest. These are usually guarded by great or skeletons at first. They can contain treasure chests with the usual loot in them. But the stone outposts that look like this will have this barrel outside that can be broken for loot, like tin and coal among other things. What makes these structures cool is you can use them as a base with stone defenses early, as you can't make your own stone structures until you progress to the swamp and use iron to make a stone cutter. You can also find furniture around these structures that can be broken for fine wood. Another source of fine wood in the Black Forest are these shipwrecks you can find along the coast. They can also be broken for fine wood and usually contain a treasure chest. Haldor is a dwarf trader that can be found in the Black Forest. He sells several unique items that can be purchased if you have the sufficient amount of coin. You can also trade things like amber, rubies, pearls, and necklaces to Haldor for more coins. You can purchase items like the fishing rod, the diverger circle, I have no idea how you pronounce that, which is a hat that provides a permanent light source, great for delving into the burial chambers. But probably one of the most important items Haldor sells is the Mejingyor, which is an item that's used in the accessory slot and increases your carry weight limit by 150, which is a huge upgrade to your inventory, allowing you to carry a lot more items at once. The Mejingyor is quite expensive however, coming in at 950 coins. If you are low on coins, I found the best way to obtain them at this point is to raid a bunch of burial chambers. It can be tricky to find Haldor in your world as he's just chilling somewhere in the Black Forest. He has 10 possible spawn locations, 1500 meters from spawn. Once you find him at one of his possible spawn locations, this will be his permanent spot for the rest of the game. When you get close to him, you'll see a shirt icon appear on the map. Also keep an eye out for his campfire, you can see it from pretty far away. If you're still having trouble locating Haldor, you could also use the Valheim map website and put your seed in it and it'll show you the location of pretty much anything you're looking for in your world, including Haldor. Something to keep in mind is some people consider these seed maps kind of cheaty. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about finding and fighting Valheim's second boss, the Elder. He's this big tree dude that shoots out vines at you and summons roots from the ground to attack you. It can be a chaotic fight the first time, but there's a few ways to cheese him, but we need to find him first. 
The Elder's Altar can be found by clicking on these Vegbasir stones. These will mark the location of the boss altar on your map. These Vegbasirs can be found in burial chambers and sometimes outside the abandoned outpost structures we talked about earlier. Once you have the boss location marked on your map, I suggest bringing the materials for a portal with you so you can get back and forth from the boss easier in case you die. When you get to the boss's location, to summon the Elder, place three ancient seeds in his forsaken altar. Before you do that though, I suggest you prepare the battlefield first. There's a few ways to take out the Elder. Melee can be effective, but you have to dodge a lot like pro Souls player. Also use a bow and fire arrows, and use the pillars to dodge his range attacks, or you can choose a really cheesy method. Go over one of the cheesy methods now. Build stairs around the entire altar like this, and then fill in the opening with floors. You want the floors to sit just under the lip of the altar. When you're all done, it should look like this. Then dig a hole directly underneath the altar until you see this cylinder pointing down, which means you're in the right spot. Dig a little spot under that, then just sit there after you summon the boss. The elder will path to directly on top of you, causing him to stand in the fire from his altar, killing him with minimal effort. The elder will drop his trophy, unlocking the most useless forsaken power ever, the tree chopping ability, woohoo! But he will also drop the swamp key, which lets you get into sunken crypts in the swamp and obtain iron, but we will cover that in the swamp guide. Well, that's it. Now you can master the black forest. If this guide helped you at all, please leave a like, and I plan to make more tip slash guide videos for all the Valheim biomes. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing, it really helps the channel grow. Have a wonderful day, peace. Yo, so sorry to interrupt the guide. This is editing Sam. I just had to show you guys this. If you've never seen this, look how scary these Leviathans are at night. They're beastly, scary creatures, but that's not what I want to show you. Look, look at this, look at it. <laughs> it's just some little green dots on a rock. What is this? Come on, come on, Iron Gate.